Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Extraordinarily Ordinary. Our guest today needs no introduction. She's smart, she's feisty, she has the courage of conviction, rarely seen in adults, let alone teenagers. Despite the negativity surrounding the event that uh, catapulted her to fame, she continues to advocate to make schools a safer place where kids are not only allowed to, but encouraged to speak out and speak up about making things right. Of course, this all probably uh, wouldn't have been possible without the strong support of her parents. They are the guiding light and constant force of encouragement behind the courageous 17-year-old. Ainrit is with us today uh, to talk about her journey, her advocacy, her hopes and aspirations to create a better social culture for her generation. So let's give a warm welcome to Ain Husniza. Welcome, Ain. Hi. I have uh, and we, we've met her um, before on yes. Amamali's um, stream and like I'm so excited to talk to you one-on-one -on -one this time. Yes, good, good. I, I'm exactly my honour to have you on my show today. Um, okay, so um, how have you been? Very, very tired. <laughs> Obviously, you can see from my face, I'm really tired. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's not just from the backlash and like all the negativity I've been getting. You know, I try to like ignore it and try to not to let it get to me that much. But in the end, I'm like a 17 year old and still things are really tiring and it's just exhausting <laughs> at this point. <laughs> My eye packs are getting deeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's normal. But still, you need to take care of yourself, also. Yeah, your health and also your mental well-being. Okay. Um. Okay. So as we all know, there were lewd comments made about you on 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 social media. So how do you deal with them? Do you even read them? I do read them, but for me personally, it's just proof in my case that rape culture is real okay that mm -hmm. the fact that small jokes can literally snowball into big actions like rape itself and in this case you can see i was trying to stand up for sexual um sexual harassment awareness and what why what our teachers doing is wrong and these pedophiles literally give these disgusting remarks about my own body they say something um, like, um, if if she if her body is like this, then I would want to rape her too. They are teachers that are teaching to our kids in school. It actually disgusted me when when I read the comments because I was thinking, this is a seventeen year old. You're you're basically still underaged, and the comments were made by adults who are supposed to know better. And it, it it saddened me when I read the comments because I I am forty years old, and if those comments were made about me, I wouldn't know how to react to that because it's 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 like a personal attack on me. So I was wondering, um, like, how does a seventeen year old deal with it? It must have been, I don't know, terrifying or, or traumatic. Been traumatic to me. I've been showing symptoms of trauma. For example, when I go to sleep, um, I, I am like subconsciously I am very aware of my surroundings. When even something as simple as someone opening the door, I feel, like, and it's really hard for me and my family to go to sleep even now is affected even so far as my dad he's also been showing trauma symptoms and if something like that can affect my dad like you know how it would affect me you know i've been crying also but to me lah right this could happen to any other girl out there if we do not stop it now and boys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to me you know like this shows this is in the public eye right now. What are you going to do about it? What is society going to do about it? Are you just going to let it slide again? We have proof that rape culture is real. Please do something about it. How has your private life been affected by your sudden rise to fame? Because you're, you're, liter you're literally a household name right now. You went from being uh, invisible where 
not the whole of Malaysia knew you to being like an overnight sensation, shall we say? Of course, you know, looking from the positive side, mm -hmm. um, when I went to Harry Thunder's um, live show last night, mm -hmm. there were even I was um, uh, I was opening like iftar at this um, at uh, this kedai, this mm -hmm. restaurant. And even one of the waitresses there actually recognized me, and to me that was that was the first time someone recognized me at a public place, and she was there to give me support. She was like, "You are the voice of like all the other students that haven't been able to speak out." And to me, like morally, that that helped so much because you know the. My private life um, is also very dangerous for me to even go to school because one of my male classmates have been getting, have been sending rape threats to me and my schoolmates aren't exactly the most supportive towards me. They're very hostile. So it affected me in a lot of ways. Positively is it all of them? All of your, your, your schoolmates? Or, or do you still have like a few friends who support you? The few friends that support me, they have to be undercover. Mm -hmm. You understand how how a minority they are? The fact like the people that support me, they mm -hmm. have to... Even they themselves, like my, uh, my friends that support me at school, they have to stay very, stay low because it might also be dangerous for them. You know, that's how many people are against me as well. I think um, from their point of view, I can understand because not many people are built for, um, I don't like to use the word confrontations, but when you're advocating for something, there are bound to be people who disagree with you. And um, that is normal. But what I dislike about what happened to you is that you're, you're being attacked from all angles. And that is just not right. I mean, we, we can disagree, but we don't have to be hostile about it, like you said. Um, and at the same time, I think people are also afraid of ramifications. Like in your case, um, you go to school and maybe your, your other friends are just afraid what would happen to their uh, education opportunities in the future. If they go to university, will they, will their names be linked to you? I mean, not that it's a bad thing, but the not many is, people you know, understand. Um, mm -hmm. Me myself, I've never mentioned anything about the name of the school. Yeah, I, I never that. mentioned the name of the school. I never mentioned the name of the teacher. So I don't understand from which point are they attacking me because obviously. I've never said anything about the name of the school. Even, <laughs> even for me myself, right? The, the school itself, by doing so much mistakes, they are that they are attracting their attention to themselves. Mm. I gave you the chance to make the right decision and you didn't. The netizens are now mad and angry. And I understand they are mad and angry. But you know, I never said anything about the name of the school. Never mm. once. Not once. Have I ever said like this school is blah blah blah? This school's name is this. So you let us go attack it. No, never mm. once. Yeah, I saw your and, like, video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like my, I my belief is that we should let people change and improve. Give them, um, give them space. Okay, but at the same time, you should take accountability for your actions. And this school, it's already been a week, okay? It's been a week and they haven't published any public statement. That teacher haven't published any public statement. So exactly, you are attracting that kind of negative attention to yourself. Why are you setting things right? Hmm. When I watched your TikTok video, I, I did notice you didn't mention uh, the school's name. You didn't even mention the teacher's name, which um, I think was was the right way to advocate things because the point here is to highlight the misconduct, not the person behind it. You also mentioned that um, you you have been experiencing um, symptoms of trauma and um, maybe a little bit of paranoia. So, um, would you mind elaborating more on that? On on how this this whole thing has deeply affected your mental mental health or mental well-being? Um, you know, I do feel like the burden and 
like how it feels very sudden to suddenly have these symptoms pop out and like it's like my what I think right now is that I think that I am not having any effects towards this kind of backlash okay mm-hmm. but actually my body itself has been showing these kind of um, effects like get getting very aware of my surroundings very cautious very scared but like my actual my actual thing is like oh it's okay I can go through this but you know that I think for myself that is like denial denial that oh, I'm going through something I, I need to stay strong yes I do need to stay strong but it has been taking it has been taking a toll to my mental health that is so true because um, in many mental health cases when it first starts um, you think like you're just overthinking it right but um, in actuality it is affecting you a lot and and to to be honest if if i were in your place i think this would have affected me even more which is why it's it's very um in, inspirational to see you being in the center of attention in all of this and yet still be able to maintain your composure in front of people but thank you so much yeah but the question is what goes on behind closed doors like when when there was nobody around you and just you and yourself how do you feel at that moment you know at first of course uh, i was when i first received the rage threats the rage threat from my main schoolmates i was shaken up i was traumatized i was crying i was crying really hard like you know like not normal crying just like crying you know like like ah oh, like crying you know and then I talked to my mom and then we, I I am very greatly affected by that and um, at that time I was thinking right what what did I do so wrong for someone to do this great threat against me all I wanted to do was at that time was call out against like all teachers that do this and teach this to their students mm-hmm. and that's all like like why why are you doing this to me right and like at that time i felt like this i felt like i that i thought that oh this is why this is why survivors don't speak out about their stories that is so true rape survivors um sexual assault survivors they rarely report these cases because at the same time they're also wondering what did they do to deserve to be treated that way when in actuality it's none of their fault just like the rape threat against you was not your fault at all but as human beings i guess we internalize and we try to rationalize things when it happens to us so um what are your hopes for the future of our country specifically for your generation um when it comes to inappropriate jokes and sexual abuse or sexual assault issues i hope with um you know with my story going around it will create more awareness around my generation because you know right now these uh, kids my age some of them still don't know why what i'm doing right now is right like they don't know between right and wrong they're like oh this problem is so small that's what they think right mm-hmm. and that's why i don't want to blame them because they were also victims to these past educators that spread this sick mindset but with my story slowly but surely i hope i can educate them as to why this thing is wrong and in the future we will not spread this sick mindset from all the oldest generations to the next generation in our country. What's next for you? I mean, after this, um, you have started your advocacy. So how do you move forward from from, from here? For now, right, um, the police hasn't really made an official statement uh, about my, about the original police report of, of the police. So I want to see what what the government what the police does about my case mm-hmm. and if they don't take it seriously then we will proceed to the next um course of action we will make sure the government takes accountability for this because that is what they should be doing but if the government does take the right action um, about our case i i'm pretty sure it will set 
to all we saw an example to all students out there hear this the government does take this case really what your teacher does is definitely wrong and you can speak out about it Yeah, I think you do have the support of some government officials because I've read um, statements from ministers who who are um, pushing for for the investigation yeah. mm-hmm. carried out uh, as quickly as possible to stop whatever. Yeah, that's why, right? Um, we don't just want it to be words. Mm. We want it to be real action taken. Thank you, Ain, for um, appearing on my show today. Um, the, uh, before we end, I have a speed round question for you. This is more fun and it has nothing to do with with what happened. It's just, you know, just a, a way to, to have fun. Okay, I have a speed round, so I'll I'll mention two two things and you just pick one. Okay, so maths or arts? Arts. Rice or noodles? Noodles. Fries or mashed potatoes? Fries. <laughs> Blackpink or BTS? Blackpink. <laughs> Laksa Johor or Laksa Penang? Laksa Johor. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is... Um, what's my favorite movie? <laughs> I have to think about this. <laughs> I, I, um, there's a lot of media that I enjoy. So I don't exactly like have a favorite on anything, especially movies. <laughs> so who's oh, your? It's so hard to think about, lah. Uh, But this is a speed round. You're not supposed to think about it so long. <laughs> I do. I do. I don't have anything in my mind. <laughs> okay, then we'll skip the question. So who is your favorite public icon? Favorite public icon. Um, huh? Nabi, <laughs> no, I I wanted to jump out the Nabi Muhammad, <laughs> Nabi Muhammad. <laughs> okay, uh, what's your favorite song? Favorite song, um, da, 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 day one I guess so by Hones. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ain. Thank you so much for being on my show today, and I do hope that your advocacy will go further than this, and you will not stop. Fighting the good fight. It it won't be easy. I tell you, it won't be easy. But you just have to keep going because what you're doing is uh, affecting so many people positively. Yeah. But at the same time, don't forget to be a teenager because you're still 17. So we'll just enjoy life and have fun when you can. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Ain. Bye. Bye.